Kia ora koutou. This is a hard question from yesterday's trig test. The first part is not too bad, so this identity um, is, is easy and most of you have done really well with this. Um, this is a really, really difficult one mark to get. Well, it's just a lot of work for one mark, I guess. And then this is quite a tricky question um, worth four marks. So I'm going to start with the identity. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got to show that sine of 3 theta is equal to this here. So you can see that where I'm heading to is a function or an expression with just sine thetas. And that's our clue for what we want to do. They've also told us basically how to do this question by first expanding this. So we're going to use my compound angle formula. So sine of 2 theta plus theta is equal to sine 2 theta cos theta plus cos 2 theta sine theta. Now, whenever I see sine of 2 theta, there's only one possible substitution in here. So we're going to have sine 2 sine theta cos theta times cos theta. And here I've got a choice of which double angle formula I use for the cosine of 2 theta. I want to end up with sine of thetas, so I'm going to replace this with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, sine theta. Now we're going to expand some stuff out. So I've got 2 sine theta here. Now here I've got cos squared theta, and remember I'm heading to sine of theta, so I'm going to replace the cos squared theta with 1 minus sine squared of theta. That's using the Pythagoras identity from AS last year. And I'll expand this out. I get sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. So cleaning this up gives me 2 sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta plus sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. And now we just have to collect up our like terms and we're going to get 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. Right, I think that's what we had to show. Yep, exactly. So the last thing we're going to write is equals the right hand side as required. Okay, so hopefully that felt like four pretty easy marks. If you've got issues with your compound angles, your double angles, or your Pythagoras identity, go and do some work in chapter three of the textbook or the work out of the old Delta textbook. I think it's chapter 34. Okay, so that was the first four marks, and now we're again guided with what to do. Show that after making this substitution, we can turn this cubic equation, which is going to be a bit icky to solve, into a simple trig equation. So, so it's kind of clear what to do, but it's still a bit of work. Let's start with the cubic. We've got x cubed minus x plus 1 sixth root 3 equals 0. So stick with exact values. We're going to substitute in now. We've got 2 sine theta over root 3 cubed minus 2 sine theta over root 3 plus root 3 over 6 is equal to 0. So looking at that and seeing that I need to get through to this, sine of 3 theta is equal to 3 quarters, what I want to do is to end up getting an expression which has got the identity from the start up here. Right? So up here we showed that sine of 3 theta was equal to this thing. So that's what I'm trying to get to with this um, equation here. So let's just expand out and then look at what common denominator might make most sense. We get 8 sine cubed theta over 3 root 3 minus 2 sine theta over root 3 plus root 3 on 6 equals 0. So I saw quite a lot of smart thinking about this. Um, my preferred thing here is just to whack it into a lowest common multiple, and I'm going to go with 6 root 3. So then carefully working through my equivalent fractions, because they're not really your 9 ones, I'm going to times this by 2. So 16 sine cubed theta. I'm going to times this by 3 over 3, so minus 6 sine theta, and here I'm going to times by root 3 on root 3, so I get plus 3. And now you can see that we've got rid of those thirds. Now I've done something stupid in here, haven't I? Yeah, I've made a mistake. I'm not going to go back and start again, guys. I'm too tired. So here you can see, you probably saw it as I did it, I should have times by 6. 6 twos are not 6. 6 twos are 12. So that's a, a, just, I guess, a lesson when you're doing a problem like this. Just check your work 
on each line as you move through to the next one because luckily I picked up that mistake in here. Um, I'm going to times both sides think through by 6 root 3. That's going to give me 16 sine cubed theta minus 12 sine theta plus 3 equals 0. Looking back up here, I want to end up with this expression equaling something. So I'm going to divide both sides through by 4. That gives me 4 sine cubed theta minus 3 sine theta plus 3 over 4 is equal to 0. I'm going to leave this here and I'll get 3 quarters is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. So we have 3 quarters is equal to sine of 3 theta. I don't know if I've ever seen that much work for one mark. I did that um, the other way around where I started on one side and went to the other and it was still quite a bit of work. And for those of you who did get that one mark, I didn't see anyone doing this a way smarter way than me. Happy for you to tell me if I've missed something. So that's where we get, get to. The good news though is that the next four marks are not so bad. So what we can do now is we know that this equation here can now be written in this form here. So all I have to do is to solve this, and that's where my hint was to use general solutions. But what we have to do at the end is not stop with the theta values. We have to go back and get three solutions for x. So to do that, remember that this all started by us saying that we had this substitution. So the method here is to find three values of theta, or maybe more, um, and then to get values of x. Now the reason that this is a bit tricky is that we have to end up with three solutions for x, and that's going to take a little bit more work than usual. All right, so let's see what's going on. Well, we've got um, sine of 3 theta is equal to 3 quarters, so this is good practice for the level 3 internal. Doing general solutions on that, I get my um, alpha is equal to sine inverse of 3 quarters, and that number is 0 0.848062. Do not round too hard at this stage. Using my general solution for sine, I get 3 theta is equal to n pi plus negative 1 to the n times 0 0.848062. Dividing through gives me this, n pi on 3 plus negative 1 to the n times, now when I divide that by 3, I get 0.282687. A number of you got to here and you stopped there. And I can see why. It's because of my stupid hint saying give a general solution. But we haven't finished the problem, right? Because what I need to do now is to get three x values. So we've got the general solution, but we should really get some particular solutions. And then we're going to use the fact that x is equal to 2 sine theta over root 3. So we want to be generating values of theta that are going to end up giving me three unique values of x. Um, I'm going to start with substituting in. So good practice when you're doing particular solutions is to show this working. So we'll start with n equals 0. So theta naught is equal to 0 plus 0.282687, which is 0.282687. Um, because I'm going to be shoving it into there, don't round it too hard. Okay, so that's good. Let's get a couple more. So n is equal to 1. That gives me theta 1 is equal to 1 pi on 3. So pi on 3 minus 0.282687, giving me a theta 1 of 0.7645. Now I'm going to get n equals 2, and I get theta 2 is equal to 2 pi on 3 plus because that's a, an even power, plus 0 0.282687. So I get to here, and that gets me 0 0.2377. And I kind of go, yay, I've got three values, let's chuck them into x. And you'll see that something is going to go wrong. And in the examiner's report, it said that overall students found this question really hard, but they especially mucked up this very last little bit here. So let's look at x naught. So x naught is going to be 2 sine 0.282687 over root 3. In other words, I'm taking the theta value and I'm substituting in here to get my x value. When I do that, I get 0.322.
and I'm going to do the same thing, so we're all good. So x1 is equal to what? 2 sine of 0.7645 over root 3, and that gives me 0.799. Now we hit trouble when we sub in 2.377. Over root 3 because it doesn't generate a different root. It gives me a repeated root which is 0.799. So, what I want to check for is when I was back up here getting my theta values, whether there are any more that might generate me a third solution. And if you think about it, or you go look on your sine graph, all of these are going to give me values. So, these values are all in the first quadrant, I've written that number down there, no they're not all in the first quadrant, hang on, this one here is 2.377, so we're working in radians, so this is 0.28 radians, so this is like this, this is about here, and this value here is between pi on 2 and pi, so it's somewhere over here, and we know that the sine function is positive there. So what we're trying to figure out is what about values down here because they're going to generate a negative value for sine theta and that will get me my third solution. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do now? Well, I, I think you could shove in n equals 3 and you'll get there, but I put in n equals negative 1 to generate an extra value from my general solutions. So n equals negative 1 gives us theta equals negative pi on 3 plus negative 1 to the negative 1 times 0.282687. Um, these are very painful, right, getting these values, but we, it has to be done. So we get negative 1.32988. And we know that that's going to generate me a unique x value, right, because I'm putting it in here and I'm in, when I do that, let's see which quadrant we're in. I'm down here, right, and so the sine is going to be negative. So x3 is equal to sine of this, oops, wrong number, 2 sine negative 1.32988 divided by root 3, and that generates negative 1.12. So quite a long video, but hopefully some of you who were going really well on the test and missed these marks are watching. Um, you can see now that I've generated three x values, one, two, and three. Just looking at the mark schedule for this question, um, sadly, you got no marks if you got theta values. To get these four marks, you had to first of all come up with a method to get right through to x, and then it was one mark for each of those solutions. So I would say there were very few students who got the whole way through that question. Um, the comment in the examiner's report that students did this part really, really well, but they struggled a little bit with this part, and then this was not well done, especially finding that negative root. Um, feel free to email me if you've got any questions on how I did that one. I'll try and do um, some more of the easier questions later on tonight.